everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we not only give you the news, but we give you reviews, clues to what's going on in the superhero genre, and lots going on as of late. I am your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Uh, but before we get into anything, um, we'd like to ask everyone to hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell. It really, really does help support the channel. Brian. What's going on, man? Uh, lost track of how many times I've watched the Eternals trailer at this point, <laughs> but there's a lot of news too. Hard to keep up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I saw that. Um, because I every morning I look at my Instagram and I just scroll through and I just started seeing Eternal stuff. I was like, oh snap, the trailer. Let me go check it out. And I saw it probably like about three or four times. Um, and we'll get into that uh, in, in a moment, but there's a lot to discuss. A lot of news has come down, uh, come out, uh, out of big announcements, acquisitions. Uh, let's get into all of that. Uh, first up, the Eternals teaser trailer. Brian, I was expecting. That when I saw it, I was going to be like super going crazy over it, right? And like Shang-Chi a bit, I was a little bit underwhelmed. But not as much as Shang-Chi. The Shang-Chi, we saw a bit of action. We saw we saw a bit of things happen around in, in that trailer. But in Eternals we didn't get to see a lot we only saw how it's gonna look right there was a lot of posturing a lot of just moments in where people are just standing and and not really doing much except for the the the, the, the speedster in that but we didn't get we, we probably got got to see a little bit of um, some sort of uh powers being displayed but again nothing to make us go wow, other than that looks interesting. But I still enjoyed it because it certainly looks very different from what we've seen in other Marvel movies. Brian, what did you think? What were your thoughts when you saw this trailer? So I, I don't agree with you. I think it was perfect. Wow. I mean, for a teaser trailer, okay. So, to me, you don't want to give anything away. So, I'm perfectly happy to not see the Celestials and the Deviant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Any sort of action at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I really liked seeing the feel. Okay, I'm, I'm in a world and it's not the traditional MCU world this the color palette is different the pacing is different uh the way these people are talking or just sort of the narration the narration of salma hayek is it's just different it almost reminded me a little bit of like a it's really offbeat but like a terrence malick movie which is like free flow lots of shots of nature it almost doesn't fit together and you're kind of just like what like where am i yeah. um but I, I liked it because of that i liked it because i felt like i don't I don't understand really anything of what I'm seeing except on yeah, a very yeah. basic level of, okay, God's among us for a long time that predated all of superheroes and all of mutants and all of that. And they've stayed out of the way in much the same way, like the Olympians or the Greeks thought the Olympians did, right? They're out of the way, but then they kind of have the guiding hand here and there. Yeah. Other than that, but I thought it was great. And I thought the shots we got, little clues of like, okay, I have a feel for Icarus and Circe, that's the central relationship in this through time. Yes. That crystallized some of the rumors for me. Yeah. I think I think Angelina Jolie looks amazing. Like yeah. just the way they've costumed the character and dyed her hair and yeah. you know, armored her up. I think look it just every time I see the little shots, I'm like, I just want to see it, you know. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, like I said, just the notion of everything you're seeing is real is yeah, 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 yeah. cool. And like, there's been a running joke around, I think that like Kevin Feige, well, apparently when Kevin Feige saw this or saw a part of the film, apparently 
was deked and asked Chloe Zhao like how she used effects to create like the ocean shots and all sorts of stuff, and she kind of basically looked at him and said, "It's the ocean," <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is like the MCU has never had a real. She's like, "That's what the world looks like. That's what I." Yeah, use. yeah, yeah. Um, so no, I, I actually was was really stoked the way it was presented, and I kind of wish honestly Shang Chi had kind of been a little more that direction, like a little more restrained and shown us a little bit less. Yeah. I loved it. I mean, I'm all in. Let's sort of um, dissect a, a bit, not as well as other YouTubers, obviously, because we don't got that kind of time. But from what we have saw, and you've seen plenty of it, let's get a little bit into it. Um, I think the introduction certainly shows the beginning, I guess, of human society, I believe. Yeah. And the arrival of the ship, all the, the ship, I think the inspiration of that ship is those many UFO sh uh, shows where you see the triangle. I think that's where they got that. They, that, they must have gotten that from there. <laughs> Unless it's in the actual et uh, Eternals comic book. If it isn't, that's where they got the inspiration from. Yeah, no, it had a little bit of that, uh, almost like the like two thousand one, you know, like Stanley Kubrick, where like the dawn of time. Yeah, 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 of, yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, a little yeah. bit of that. Um, That's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah. Some people are speculating that that kid that they focus on a little bit is because he he was in a tweet a long time ago with Salma Hayek, and the rumor or the speculative rumor is that he is supposed to be of that society is supposed to be atlantean supposedly we don't know we don't know but that's what they're they're speculating on because they they seem to think atlantis is going to be uh, uh you'll see that you'll see it in this film well i'm assuming we're going to get either directly or indirectly the origin thread of almost everything we have seen yeah. or are going to see yeah in the multiverse like yeah. so whether it's a direct line to mutants or it's like an indirect line that leads you to wakanda like there's going to be all of these pieces i feel like they're going to fall into place once we're once we see this yeah um i think who's narrating salma hayek or salma hayek cersei yeah. so they've been there throughout time and they've never interfered until now it sort of sounds almost like the watchers sort of mo yeah they just watch and until something of great danger or a, a great uh a, a great event has to be uh, averted and they, they they interfere i'm curious i don't know if you have any clues as to what this event um that's happening that they must interfere do you have any ideas as to what that is no, and I think that's part of the beauty of it is because when you're talking about something that is literally from the dawn of time, and she says now, but when is now? Is now yeah. now? Is now post the blip? Like is now a thousand years ago? That now could be any time. Now, I think we are led to believe it's somewhat modern just based on the shots of them in contemporary clothes in cities, right? So logically, yeah. we're not in like ancient Greece. For now. Yeah, yeah. Assuming it has something connection to the blip, right? I mean, that would be somewhat logical to bring this story sort of connected to the broader universe, but unless you think it's more connected to something Thanos did prior to that, I don't know. But it, it it's not, you know, when Cap was made, for example, it's not, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it's not from the '90s when Captain Marvel originated. It, it, the shots are meant to be somewhat current, but no, I, I don't have a specific view on whether it's the blip or not. If it is, that's cool. But if it isn't, it's even better. And why I say that is because it could possibly lead towards the next big event. Um, I'm sort of, I'm not necessarily tired of the blip and what went on around that time and with other people and characters and stuff like that. I'm always curious to see what they experienced. But I want to see... Because if you think about the Eternal, you would, I would find it difficult to understand how the Eternals m had an effect on the outcome of that. It would be interesting to see if they did, but I'm hoping to see if whatever they have to deal with 
is sort of escalating to something major. Um, well, and it's just the beginning. Years. You've got five years to play with. So, you know, this could be one of those things where it's not even the blip itself and it's not even the Avengers then reversing time. Like it could be it's between, within those right? five years. That, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's true. That we don't know. So that's true. That's true. That, that makes that makes sense as well. Like the deviants make a move somewhere in those five years. And yeah. that's when they respond. Who don't, you know, so. Interesting. Um. So we obviously see uh, Icarus and, and um, Cersei throughout time either find them, find each other, or they're always together. Um, and there was one thing that I, that that I found a very interesting is the speedster. I don't know her name. I don't know the character's name. Is she blind? Great question. So I don't, yeah, the, the, the origin of each of these individual characters is not as well versed. I know what you're saying though, because she looks, the actress looks like she's playing it that way, right? In the, yes. In at least one of the shots. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like how Charlie Cox plays. Yes. When she saved that little girl boy from yep. getting this um, smash from, from that falling debris, she never makes eye contact with I it doesn't look like she's making contact eye contact with anyone. So if she looks like she's blind, it'll be interesting to see if that if my eye catches that that little little thing. Um but yeah. It was so this 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 the way this movie looked looked so different from what other Marvel films have been that they it sort of seemed like they threw in that last piece of uh, dialogue to let you guys know that this is still Marvel. Oh yeah, like the callback to the shawarma scene. All, all yes. The yes, yes, yes. My biggest fear with this movie, my biggest fear with this movie is that it's allowed to be itself for the first two acts and then in the third act, parliament kind of reigns it in <laughs> my biggest fear with this movie i just want i just want them to like take the swing like go for the 700 foot home run and if yeah. you strike out you strike out yeah my biggest fear is as we all know ang lee won best director then he took over the hulk and it was a disaster i hope History doesn't repeat itself, and I hope it doesn't rhyme. Because that would be a travesty. That's my only concern. But other than that, this film really, really looks great. They left um, a lot of the, the money shots out. It was a lot, of, again, there was a lot of um, posturing, a lot of just standing there. No we saw, at all. yeah, no action at all. We got a little bit. Yes. Separation of weapons and stuff, but no action at all. Yes, and, and a little bit of, well, uh, we got a little bit of a glimpse of uh, who um, this guy, the the Indian cat that the he that he got yeah, Diesel, the Bollywood star. In his yes, musical. yes, yes, <laughs> that looked dope to me. <laughs> dope to <laughs> yes. me. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things that happen in this in this in this trailer, and uh, and I'm and this again, this was two minutes, and it was a teaser. You know why I'm not as concerned about the Ang Lee um, precedent is because I think that you, I, everyone who's associated with Marvel had much stronger preconceived views of what the Hulk should be in a way that I don't think we have that here. Like if yeah. you're, Maybe there are diehard Eternals comics fans out there who are going to be sticklers for this content. But I feel like when the general audience approaches this with a much more open mind of like, I don't I don't have a view of what I how Icarus should act. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Madden can kind of take it where he wants. Whereas I think like what we got in Hulk, it just, you know, there were some choices there about the way they played the melodrama and the tragedy that like, I just think it didn't resonate with people as far as like being true to the character. That they yeah, was. yeah. Hey, um... Was there anything else that that you found interesting about the the trailer? 
Well, like I said, I think the ch- the choice to not show you the bad guy at all. I think. Yeah, true, true, you know, true, true. A, true. You know, not even in it. I mean, a lot of teasers like to do it in like a power of suggestion way. Like if you remember the Dark Knight, where it was like you just got Heath's vo- Heath Ledger's voice. You didn't see him, you just heard him, but like it gave you that flavor of what the position was. Yeah. This was entirely centered just on that team. And I thought that was that was an interesting choice. Yeah. Again, I don't want to sound like I'm disappointed in the trailer. I I, I definitely did enjoy the trailer. I do know that this was a teaser trailer, so I understand not seeing more grandiose shots. I understand that they did they did that for a reason. I was just hoping for more, but it, I'm not def, I'm not nowhere um, less excited than I was before the um, the Eternals was announced. To Chloe Zhao doing it, I, I'm more and more I'm getting more and more excited because again we've seen prior to seeing anything, we've seen shots of the Celestials and other beings that are going to be spectacles when they come on camera. So uh, when we get those shots, I think the level of excitement that 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 people wanted to feel that they didn't feel it with this trailer are going to feel it then when that does come out. Um, so let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Eternals teaser trailer. Did Are you more excited, less excited, or did you want to see more? Let us know in the comment section below. Um, Feige regrets whitewashing the ancient one. I don't know how you feel of that, about that, Brian, because I, when I saw the movie, I didn't feel a certain way about it. I thought that it was fine. Um, I think initially when when I I heard the cast thing news for for her being the ancient one was a little bit like it didn't bother me. I don't know if it bothered you. Did it bother you that the ancient one wasn't an old Asian man? I think it bothered me that a little bit of the ancient one wasn't Asian. Um, I think I think the story is interesting on a couple of levels because. Kevin Feige says they were trying to avoid this trope of the old Asian male kind of mentor, master, wise man. Yeah. Fair enough. That's a stereotype. That's yeah, a stereotype yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in a lot of circumstances. And I do remember the outcry at the time. There was an outcry. That's not actually revisionist history. I don't, it would have been very different today, obviously. But I think back, even back then, there were a lot of people kind of like, "What? Like, what, what is this?" Yeah. Even though, like, I think, I think Tilda Swinton had already won an Oscar by the time she was cast in this, so it wasn't like they were putting nobody in the role. Yeah. I think what I didn't get from the article was how would he have solved the problem differently? Like, he's sort of he's apologizing for the choice, but he's not really offering you the amendment and old Asian woman. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think there's some people that are almost speculating that like Tony Leung and Chong Chi is almost the apology for that character. It's like, here's, here's the Asian mentor, but it's not old. It's not young. He's kind of in the middle. I don't know. That's what I didn't get from the article. It's like, he, he regrets it. She played the part fine. She was, you know, like if you didn't yeah. know the background of the character, she was an interesting character in the movie. She offered no comment. So he's kind of throwing her on the bus a little bit, <laughs> which I'm sort of like is a little weird. But then yeah, I yeah. hear like, okay, what would you have done to make it better? Like if you had another go at that, who's the person you would have put in that role? Or if you were looking at other actors and actresses at the time who were of Asian descent, who were they? Are we allowed yeah. to know? Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if better, I think more, ex- more acceptable 
than what he intended to do. Um, it's tough because I mean, like some I, I, for me sometimes you know it's okay to to go a bit how you know what people think. I mean, you got Mr. Miyagi, you got. Um, even though you don't remember his name, Bruce Leroy's um, sensei, uh, they, they, it's, I, I don't think there would have been an issue with that because it's a part of the comics, right? It's, it's so I don't think there would have been an issue if he would have, I understand what he was trying to not lead towards because he just didn't want to play the same old song, but he's still, all these guys, all these individuals are remembered for their individuality. And, and and he just should have tried to kept go that route still and just made it a dope. Come on, the Asian one is a dope individual. It's the Asian one. He, you know, he does. I don't know if you ever saw Doc Strange, the animated movie. Yeah. Check it out. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. Um, like I said, he, he, the whole thing has got these cross currents of like he's solving for some problems that may or may not exist and then they're creating others and that's what i said i i wish he had actually come full circle and said a i regret it b here's what i would have done here's who i the type of person i would have installed in the role and why that would have worked better for the for the film and also the the diversity and the representation of the cast yeah um you know i think because i think like if you, you know through cinema one of the issues that has always that I, I guess that I go to as being a little more common is this whole the the the, the, the Caucasian savior, right? So you think yeah. about like Last Samurai, if we're going to draw on Asian descent, right? It's like you know the Tom Cruise character, yeah, he's meant to, for box office, but the way the story is written, it, there's almost an implication that the samurai and Ken Watanabe could not have saved themselves without this drunk, washed out <laughs> Union white soldier, and it's like yeah. you see that trope over and over again as well so i think that's why people are sensitive to when a role is written especially for sort of asian ethnicity or native american ethnicity would be another version of this like that that it just gets changed um yeah and so he was i guess trying to be sensitive to one trope but may have you know trod on another so i mean the other part of it was like did this he must have been asked this specifically because i i find it hard to believe that he would have proactively vis revisited this yeah yeah yeah. yeah 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 maybe just because doc strange 2 is coming and there's a question of whether she, maybe there's a question of like whether she's involved like well that's the other thing right so if you have a multiverse are you now gonna like erase her from the multiverse because you feel bad about the decision that doesn't seem fair either yeah 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 so, um, yeah i don't know a little head scratching quite honestly overall but yeah and speaking of the last time why that's why probably matt damon's uh outing Oh, totally ball. failed. Yeah, totally failed. Same, it's same, same exact. Ball. Yeah, yeah. These people don't need you. To see <laughs> they need you to. They need you to sell some tickets. I guess. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Need you to save themselves. But uh, yeah, let us know in the conversation below what do you think about Kevin Feige's regrets regarding whitewashing of the Ancient One? Should he have casted an Asian old person? Um, I or think it would have been or, fine. Or just, yeah, I guess the more generally, who would you have wanted to see in the role that, yeah. would have, I guess, navigated all of these issues without controversy? I yeah, exactly. I would ask it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next up, Bad Boys for Life filmmakers to direct Batgirl for Warner Brothers. Um, as we all know, Josh Whedon was supposed to helm that. And we all know what went down with that. And now, um, off the success and uh, of Bad Boys for Life, which critics love, audiences loved, and a lot to do with that is the, the film directors, I believe, what's, what's their name? Adil L. R. Arby and Bilal Fala are directing Batgirl. Listen, the people behind this film, Christina Hodson, um, she, she wrote uh, Bumblebee, which was a, a good movie. I liked 
Bumblebee. I don't know what you thought of it, and I yeah, I, I thought it. Yeah, well, yeah, I thought Travis I thought that would have been in the beginning of a yeah, I thought that would have been the beginning of the Transformers franchise right there, oh, but I would, I would actually I was actually wishing he would they would kind of retcon and have him do the generation one. Yeah. Cuz I actually thought that the, the Transformers in that movie were better and more believable than the ones in the Michael Bay. Yeah. She she, she was doing screenwriting for Birds of Prey and The Flash. Christine Burr um so who's gearing up for the release of Cruella this month is is producing so that you got a lot of people who are doing big stuff behind this movie after having this conversation with you brian you don't seem to think that this is a possibility now i'll say this i grow weary and concerned for films that have to do with the Batman universe without Batman being not necessarily a central piece, but yeah. certainly his presence being felt. Yeah. I have a big issue with that. So if that would not have been a part of her becoming Batgirl, then I would have been disappointed and this movie would have probably been a disappointment. What are your thoughts? I'm not sure this movie will get made, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. I tend to think that this fits in that basket of assets where the studio is going to keep moving on them before the merger is closed. But we're so far away from this actually getting in front of a camera yeah. that I don't know for sure that this will happen. So first off, the directors are, are you know, did a nice job with Bad Boys for Life. Uh, that movie was much better than I thought it was going to be. But honestly, I think it actually was the highest grossing movie of yes. 2020. I yes. think that's true. Um, you know, albeit asterisk for the type of year, but I believe that's true. Um, it's just, I struggle with why this project is even a priority for the studio at this point. What What is so essential about Batgirl that we have to focus on this? Because if we're talking about representation, there's plenty of that. Right? I mean, I don't know if you saw, like Sasha Kaye was kind of debuting maybe her look for Supergirl. It's like they're going short, dark hair. Like, okay, so you got Supergirl alive and well, you know, in a number two or three role in, in Flash. That's awesome. You know, you've got a Zatanna series that has a, an Academy Award nominated filmmaker kind of writing, show running that. Um, Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn, obviously, kind of headlining the, the, the and, and Viola Davis, you know, in Suicide Squad. So I'm kind of missing why this project has to be on the fast. And not to mention, obviously, Wonder Woman is obviously, do, you know, you know, so they successful. We could argue mm. that Wonder Woman 84 was, but the franchise is successful. Why do we need this right now? I don't get why this is still a priority for the studio, especially given, as you said, the guy who brought it to them is persona non grata and he's he's not ever going to be making this film so i just was like when i saw this i was like this is still alive <laughs> but I, that was sort of my reaction why well, yeah you got a lot of batman assets like you said you know the gotham series the new animated series the batman movie like batman is oh and even michael keaton in the flat like batman is well accounted for right yeah. now i don't know why we need this yeah I, and i get for me i think it's just that it, I, this that's it that agenda um, in that part of the universe, I guess, in, in that world of Batman. Um, having still not established Robin, having still not established Nightwing, having still not established a lot of great aspects of the Batman universe, I don't see the rush to do Batgirl. And like you said, this may not get done because we're certainly far off of seeing anything on paper or, you know, so I don't I don't think this is going to get done either. But let's see, man, if they do do it. Batman better be in the mix somehow. <laughs> but if he's in the mix, are you going to ask Pat and say to get it? Are we going to get who are, who are we going to get? There's just going to be too many they should just leave this alone man leave this alone let these other things play out let the success of these other things play out and if there is a batman 2 or batman 3 which is supposed to be a trilogy introduce her 
what's the and if I mean James Gordon is black in the Batman. There's your opportunity if you wanted to do it, because now it makes sense. Right? You're not doing it just to do it. You're doing it because this is the situation. I again I've always felt that the Batman could be if they think about it do, doing it this way could be the beginning of that universe of that dceu universe and you can branch off in so many different directions from there but let's see let's see uh, let's see well that's why i think there's a chance this doesn't make it because Man. The, the batman is what we think it is the momentum from that will i think naturally prioritize the things that are directly connected to that Batman. So the yeah. Gotham series and Matt Reeves working on the animated series, those will get the resources. Now, if the Batman is bad, if it's bombs for some reason, okay, that's a different Don't say that, Brian. Don't say but, that, Brian. But if, it, if it's what we think it is, I would think the combined new Warner Media Discovery is going to say, that's where we want to put all the resources. Yeah. We'll get to that girl in that sandbox yeah yeah as opposed to having its own thing over here that'd be my that'd be my guess yeah uh let us know in the comment section below does batgirl get made let us know in the comment section below so it's official brian we talked about it last week as this possibly may happen what sort of uh things may occur with this acquisition but is official amazon buys mgm for 8.45 billion dollars not the 72 billion dollars disney paid for fox <laughs> so amazon got a discount yeah. on a yeah, yeah, but uh, they got a discount on a lot of different things that they can sort of grow and build upon. They can do a 008, 009. They can build that universe if they decided to do so. They can build the Rocky uh, universe if they decided to do so. Club of Lang, his show, it, it got to happen. It got, Mr. T, we only have Mr. T, but for so long, we cannot just have him in commercials. I'm sorry. Mr. T was the best thing about Rocky three. And you're going to tell me he just disappeared and just chilling, not doing anything. You do a show. I can get you. I can, I can cast this whole show for you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do so, but that th th this is, this is huge for Amazon. And I was watching John Campion. He said something very, um, very, and, and I understand, um, um, what he said and it makes sense that the winners of the people or the people that are going to succeed or the entities that are going to succeed are the people that have this original content and now with this purchase of, of mgm they can build a, upon this vast library and, and and build new things what are your thoughts on the streaming wars uh, uh moving forward yeah no that's that's why you do it it's interesting that Sly Stallone was on, uh, I think he's been tweeting. People were like, hey, are you in Creed 3? And he's like, no. No. Sticking to what I said, I finished my arc in Creed 2. He's like, but he's like, I have this idea for a prequel, prequel TV yeah. series. And I'm like, well, this is, there what, it is. this is what this deal is for. Right? Yes. This is that exact idea. Yes. Because you can put that up on Prime Video and people will be curious. Like, what does that look like? You know, you, yeah. you, the, the Clubber Lang, like Clubber Lang show as a spinoff of what Creed 3 is, if we assume that Clubber Lang is part of Creed 3, which logically I, I'm assuming. I would assume so. Right? I mean, yeah. we did Drago, we did, I mean. It, you got to you know, come full circle, yeah. Um, that's a really natural extension of that. So I think there are a lot of ways to go with that. Um, and similarly with Bond, like you said, I mean, Bond is an easy world to expand. So yeah, that's that's why that's why you buy it. You you want to buy because you have your purely original stuff, and you want to put it alongside some brand name stuff. Yeah, and what, that's what Rocky and that's what Bond and now Lord of the Rings like. That's why you have some of that because yeah. man, that hooks people, and then they hit you with a the little algorithm that says, "Oh, if you like that, then you might like this." And 
yeah, away we yeah. go. So no, no, it all it all makes sense. I would be excited if in Creed Three, Club Lang is his trainer. That would be dope. That would be dope. Because who are we going to get as a trainer? We ain't going to get his father. His father gone. Rocky is gone. Who is we going to, are we going to introduce a new person? Possibly, but what fun is that? Unless you make, he has to be a high caliber star. Somebody we know already. It is, can't be uh, some new person. Is, um, is Duke still out there? Who? Duke. Duke's? Uh, the Duke, he is, but... Tony, Tony Burton from... Uh, he, yeah. Is he al- considered alive in this universe? Do we know? <laughs> I don't know, because he disappeared after Rocky 20. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, let us know what you think of, of this Amazon um, deal that, that just happened. Um, it, I, I, I'm, I'm certainly curious to see what sort of content gets announced for the Amazon uh the 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 platform yo amazon is just taking over everything man amazon is taking over everything do you think there's going to be an issue with um the purchase of this uh, uh of mgm i mean i don't know i mean that that's tough for me to say i i think like we've seen we've seen a lot of big deals go through i mean we just it was funny that we we just got AT&T went through a lot of hoops to get Time Warner done. And that was a lot bigger deal than this. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Um, you know, I think Amazon's, yeah, Amazon's a behemoth company. The, the difference is that Amazon is not an entertainment company. That's what makes it interesting, right? If you're it. just looking at it on the servers, like Disney exists to entertain in some form. Netflix exists to entertain. This new Warner Media discovery, what they're making it into is a purely entertainment business. So Amazon is the only big player at the table where what they generate a lot of their revenue on has nothing to do with entertainment. You know, it's about web services, you know, cloud storage. Like it's it's not about like what shows you're watching. So their attitude toward it, it can be a little different as a result. So that's part of what I'm curious to see with this is like, if they're going to consolidate a few brands and a few studios, like, how do they treat the talent? How do they treat the projects? And how does that compare to what these other companies who do nothing but that? Yeah, yeah, true, true. How does it look? I think, I think it's an open question. True, true. Uh, next up, the Batman star Robin Pattinson signs a first look deal with Warner Brothers and HBO Max. Now, some would say that this is not a big deal, that there's a lot of people that get first first looks um, deals like this. But I think to get something like this, because I think we also got, um, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Michael B. Jordan got a deal like this, right? A similar, not, you know, similar deal. I don't know what con- what sort of contractual details are in there, but they got a, he, he has a first look deal with Warner Media as well, or Warner Brothers. But I think, it's important to know that when you have deals like this, in my opinion, when you have a deal like this, that means an idea has a possibility of being created mm-hmm. rather than it just being an idea and you trying to get funded for it or do whatever to it to get it off the, 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 the ground. With this, it's already off the ground. But does it soar and, and continues and, and it gets made? That's a whole different story. So this is a huge uh, 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 deal for him. Um, I'm just wondering, where do you think, how do you think this transpired? Do you think this transpired because of the Batman and what they think the Batman will be once this releases? or as well as possible conversations during this film process with Robin Pattinson. And I guess the stuff that he's done in the past what is what led to this uh, deal. Well, I thought it was interesting and positive because there were a lot of rumors about 
Batman. Yeah. And Robert Pattinson's behavior instead of the Batman. I see this and I say a lot of that had to have been false. Really, yeah, because if the guy was if the guy was such a huge diva and impossible to work with, I find it hard to believe that he would immediately then be offered this kind of deal. Yeah. So it kind of tells me, and it, from his perspective, he couldn't have had that bad of a time. Yeah. Film, if he was then immediately willing to work with the same studio again for a number of future projects, or at least have a first, you know, first look at that. So that was my first take. Was like, it made me feel better about the creative process of the Batman. If this is where we ended up, that was my number one takeaway. Number two was, look, this is something I, I said to you the other day. If you're not buying studios, you buy people. Yeah. And this is not, you know, first look doesn't mean he can only work for them, but it means that he gets his pick of the projects and that they want to have their pick of kind of his time, if you will. Or yeah, they want to be able to be the first guys to say, no, we'll pass. Yeah, they're in the Robert Pattinson business. And yeah. I think you're going to, you know, that's what we're seeing with Ryan Johnson. That's where, like, that's going to be more, prominent. like you mentioned, Michael B. Jordan, that's where we're headed. It's like, you're not going to monopolize the talent, but it's, yeah, you want to have the first draft pick. Like, you always want to be the first you know, first studio to say no, or the first actor to say no. Right. So there's control there, creative control there. Yeah. And so I think it just fits with that idea of you're going to see talent. He's, Robert Pattons is pretty seasoned, actually, but he's a young guy. He's not an old guy. So I think yeah. Michael B. Jordan, not an old guy. Like, you're going to be seeing this more and more, I think, with younger talent. Like, I think, you know, guy like locking Hitch, them in, yeah. For example, which I don't know why he's being Willy Wonka, but anyway, like <laughs> a guy like that is the kind of guy where like he might be 22, 23 years old and the studio is going to be like, we want to sign that guy for four yeah. years, basically, you know, that yeah. kind of deal. So yeah, no, I think that's where, this is where we're headed. And because of prior decisions Warner Brothers have, have made in the past and, and, and broken possibly relationships that they've had, they're probably sort of trying to re-up with newer individuals whom you know, who, who can stick around uh, because, you, again, you got Nolan talking about he's bouncing or he bounced and, and other people who didn't like what they did. So with these newer guys that are sort of stars or in their early days, give them that opportunity to be like, tell me what you're thinking and let's see if we can get this done. If not, you can go somewhere else, but we want that first opportunity to green light something. Well, I think guys like Robert Pattinson benefit from the turmoil around a Christopher Nolan, right? Because it's the agent for Robert Pattinson can sit across the table and say, you're not going to do that to my client. Yeah. Our asking fee just went up. Yeah. The studio is like, we don't want to lose this guy. So we're going to pay. Because remember, this is being negotiated by the existing management, right? This has nothing to do with the new deal. That's the other yeah. thing that's important to recognize. It's like, there's nothing on the discovery side that's touching announcements like this so he's choosing to work with the personnel not even knowing what the, the combined entity is going to look like so yeah it's interesting i mean it's, it's definitely interesting but i just assume yeah he must have must have done pretty well <laughs> yeah yeah um snyder i think it is safe to say that snyder is gonna do He's been given the keys to roam in the world of Netflix. Uh, he is uh, doing a uh, a Snyder School on YouTube for Netflix Netflix's channel. Um, so this is just another yet another example of the, I guess. the rapport he has with Netflix and Netflix with him. And that I think this is the letting him do what he wants to do, so to speak. And I find it difficult to believe that Zack Snyder is going anywhere but to Netflix to continue his career and do whatever he's been dreaming of doing and, and, and having 
it just get done. What are your thoughts on this uh, Snyder School on YouTube that he's doing and his relationship with Netflix? Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, it, it just seems like it's uh, it's all it's all roses over there, and, and in stark contrast, I think, to his Warner Brothers experience. Now, I remember I think Marty Scors Martin Scorsese did something like this through like a masterclass series a couple years ago, where you could sort of pay to be instructed by him. I actually think Zack Snyder is one of the better filmmakers out there to do this. I mean, at least my impression of him, he always seems very fan friendly. Actors and actresses all seem to swear by him, regardless Man. of how the movie gets received. As we said, people work with him over and over and over again and stand by him. I don't know. That usually lends itself to being a pretty good teacher, at least from the standpoint of you know, to communicate and make something fun. And like we said, Zach never lacks for ideas. So I feel like, I don't know how interactive this would actually be, but like, yeah. he strikes me as the kind of guy that would want to make it so. Uh, I'm curious, I would want to check this out. I yeah, I'm gonna definitely check it out. To be a filmmaker, but I, I would be curious to see what this looks like. Cause I actually think of, you know, in some ways, you know, guys like Spielberg or Nolan or David Fincher or whatever, like. I don't know if they would translate to being a good professor like yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant filmmakers but they almost seem like they have to be in their own world yeah 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 this yeah, guy yeah. seems kind of more like you could be in a class with him and it might and it'll be, be fun. fun be fun yeah yeah uh yeah i mean i i like film i've dabbled in a little bit of editing and things of that nature nothing huge nothing major it's something i'm surely interested in but i don't know if i have the brain capacity or time to do a film but i i have a bunch of ideas a bunch of ideas that i would love for someone to be like i'll definitely want to pitch a movie or a show or anything like that that's 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 what i would like to do but yeah um and snyder's uh um, relationship with Netflix. Do you think he goes anywhere but uh, to Netflix? No, I can't. I, I just the the Army of the Dead reception, the way Netflix distributed that film in theaters only for like a week and then put it on the service. That was seemed like they were kind of experimenting, experimenting a little bit with their own format. Yeah, 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 yeah. His yeah. movie to do that, I thought that was significant. And then you see stuff like this and he's been like i said he's been very positive and talking about them public i mean everything he says about them is the opposite of what he says about <laughs> <laughs> I just, look I, I just i don't understand why after all of that we're going to wake up and see him on hbo max making justice league 2. it just doesn't make sense it just doesn't add up at this yeah. point. yeah let us know in the comment section below man uh for some of you, you know, you must realize that this is the end for the Snyderverse. There is no way that is happening. I hope you realize that. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of this, this relationship between Snyder and Netflix. And uh, yeah, next up, Feige, in a recent uh, article, spoke of Loki and the many different versions of Loki. Brian. What does he mean? Because I know I, I've heard in, 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 in the past regarding the Loki series that we're going to meet different versions of Loki. But we don't know necessarily how this is going to occur. Probably him having flashbacks of his past. Um, but what, are you, what, what, what did you think of his uh, comments? I so he made a specific comment talking about the fact that we would see multiple versions of multiple characters in the MCU and that Loki would kind of be prominently featured as one of those which I mean that makes sense conceptually for this whole you know that timeline chart that we saw in the one trailer and the TVA and what it represents so I'm assuming yes we're going to see him encounter his self alternate or former self got it all sorts of points in history and maybe in parallel like you know how events could have played in in, in, in the same time but in a different universe and then at the same time I, I guess that means we're gonna run into you know there's gonna be some fun guest stars and cameos of characters we know 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see how big, like how 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 big name they went with this. Like, you know, how many Avengers are we going to run into, for example, yeah. along the way of this? Yeah. Um, and and they're going to be playing alternate versions of themselves. That's kind of what seems to be implied here. So you, you liken I mean, this, you liken this to what if almost. I kind of I wanted to ask the question of you, which is like, you know, it, what if was more dramatic in its change right it was it would be like you know it wouldn't be like let's tweak captain america It'd be like let's make captain america soviet or something like, yeah, you know, something yeah. really dramatic but but it seemed like it was kind of pushing that show in that direction and i was curious mm. as to what you thought about that whether that was something that excited you or whether it was something that almost concerns you and made the two shows feel a little bit too similar um that poses a little bit of concern um Whereas with what if is just basically asking the question, what if there isn't a certain event that causes these um, parallel or multiverse events? Um, whereas in the Loki show, something certainly occurred when he took the space stone and caused this, this disruption in the timeline. And that, therefore he has to go fix um, with the TVA. So all I would have to say is we have to wait and see how different um, these two shows will be. I'm still excited for both. Coming up fast, though. So. Yeah, what, two weeks, right? Yeah, it's June 9th, right? It's the Wednesday of that week. That's, I mean, hey, everybody's going to show up for this one because it's been a, a minute already, you know? And, and <laughs> that first episode, everybody's going to be locked in to talk about it the next day. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Loki is going to have to offer um, when it does officially release on a Wednesday, on a Wednesday. And this is some, this is a conversation that we had prior about, you know, Disney dabbling on different days other than the Fridays that we're used to seeing and establishing more of a, a, different day sort of show, you know, capturing Mondays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays from other uh, 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 networks. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. We made it, through a, we made it uh-huh. through a whole year with no content. And now we're like, what? Impatient <laughs> after a couple weeks. Uh, hey, that's, I don't want to deviate, but this is why I say when we do get back to the movie theaters, and the Batman is released. This is going to be huge. The Batman is definitely getting over a billion. I'm saying 1.5. I'm saying 1.5. Okay. You're I'm right. Just, two. I'm just, I'm no, I, I think I did say two. I oh, think I said, okay, I think, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I did say two. I think I did yeah. say two. I think I'm at like one three. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I did definitely say that it was going to be the Black Panther. Uh, yes, numbers. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. In other news, Filoni, it is is now the executive creative director. I believe Kathleen Kennedy is on her way out. Did you hear that? So. The, well, she, the, she's supposedly on the last year of her contract at Lucasfilm, okay. and okay. she's also married to Frank Marshall, who is the lead producer on the Indiana Jones franchise. Okay. And obviously, Indiana Jones 5 is supposedly finally ready to go, um, has been casting a lot recently. Um, and I think the thought has been maybe that the two of them would kind of want to ride off into the sunset with that film as opposed to understandably so rise of skywalker right they don't want to plot uh-huh. so then the thought is well does she want to stick around for the re-up and sort of a whole nother generation of star wars and so i think the thought is when you see something like this it at least positions dave filoni who's certainly earned it yeah many times over uh with his work on the mandalorian and the animated universe um to kind of at least put him in a position where like if she does retire or they, they don't you know, give her a new contract then you know star wars is already kind of in in his hands so that, i think that's sort of where this information fits with the rumor that's out there that she might be wanting to go out with indy 5 
it's quite possible that this could be that that, that she won't re up and I, and I feel and I say this because of this there are a lot of opportunities out there now to do other things and, and and still be in charge of that world or that franchise or whatever obviously with with Amazon Netflix Warner Media this there's you if you've been doing this and you had success somewhat success with what you've been doing at Disney what's to say that you can pull this off with another studio and that studio or, or that platform not wanting someone to who knows what they're doing to do something so she's in a great position or they're in a great position to to go off somewhere else and do something different and something new something more challenging than stay at lucasfilm and getting criticized for doing these three other films you know it's just an opportunity to do something new so i think they might take that opportunity to to, to go somewhere else i think the question is very similar to the one we asked about kevin feige before we found out the parliament was a thing which mm-hmm. is how stretched can you make dave filoni before the quality of star wars starts to suffer right in the sense of he was he directed a number of the Mandalorian episodes in season one and two, in addition to writing, in addition to show running with, with John Favreau. If he's the executive creative director and you're kind of have all these series which are supposedly coming and these other films and things like that, he, he by definition is gonna be further away from something like the Mandalorian. Yeah. So then my natural question is, you know, we know Favreau's connected to him, but who else is in that room, right? It's- yeah can't be two people like you would need a parliament equivalent of star wars fanatic yeah to help oversee all of these properties and coordinate them yeah. so that, that'd be my natural question is like it's like a great thing for him it's probably a great thing for broader star wars you hope the mandalorian doesn't suffer yeah because he's not as hands-on yeah uh yeah i mean who know who, who's to say that Kevin Feige might not be a part of his parliament because he's he's producing he's a star. star Wars movie, yeah, right? exactly. So he might be because he's a Star Wars fan as well, you know, and so he might be offering some Filoni some help and and helping him out with stories or whatever the case may be. Because obviously, you know, Kevin Feige has his people, and who knows how much? Because uh, Kevin says yay or nay. He has the he he pretty much has the last say. So, with the parliament being a part of or a different set of people being a part of uh, Filoni's team, you know he may be one of those guys that he has to pat, run it by Filoni, and he has the last say. So, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Um, it was a, it's funny because they. I'll say the one thing they be, they better not railroad Carl Weathers because you saw <laughs> Rangers of the New Republic probably is going to get canceled because of uh, yeah, Toronto yeah. not getting recast uh, the cartoon not getting recast like Grief Cargo needs a show he needs to be somewhere in this universe so they better not they better yeah not push that guy to the side because of yeah. that whole situation but. yeah let us know in the comment section below what you think about this move with Filoni being the executive creative director for the for Lucas film. Um, it's gonna be interesting, man, because I'm pretty sure those guys, him with uh, as well as what's this guy's name, John Favreau, have a bunch of ideas and and things that they want to do. Man, this is like I love that job, man. Just to create something new, and that's just amazing. Um, and something that I want to I wanted to share with you guys. I had spoken about it uh, some time ago. And and this was regarding the cast for the Thundercats film that's being done by uh, the guy that did what's the guy's name that did Adam the guy that, Adam Wingard. Uh, as you all know, it was announced a few probably like a month ago that he is doing the Thundercats film. Now it's not going to be a live action per se, but it'll be. More CGI. I think we were we were going we were looking at sort of the uh, Avatar sort of way, 
but they were looking at doing this. So without further ado, this is my cast for the, the Thundercats. And it's not all of the Thundercats. The Wiley Kit, Wiley Cat, I don't really care about because you can get anybody for that. But um, here we go. For Panthro. And I, and I know I know you, Brian. And you, you're gonna be like, oh my god, that's you, you absolutely nailed it. Peter Mensa. I don't know if you know him. I think you don't. Okay. Have you ever seen Spartacus? Yeah. Who's it? Which was he on Spartacus? He's the dude that's training the gladiators. Oh yes, I do know him. Oh Pete? yeah, you're right. He looks great. Yeah, I know him from. I actually know yes. him from other other. Um, yes, he was in Hulk. He was in. He was, he was incredible. He was. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He he was an incredible. He was the one that got kicked into the pit in three hundred. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> perfect. That's awesome. Um, yeah. He yeah he's perfect for that role as Panthro. Definitely perfect. <laughs> for Jaga, we got Charles Dance. He's brother oh, yeah. Noopsy. For, and this is a little bit of a stretch for a bit happening, but to me it just looks perfect uh, for this guy to take take that role for Tigra um we got Pattinson for it I think Pattinson would be perfect for Whoa. it it'll be hard yeah. to get him to do it but I think for, as for Tigra he just has that look as Tigra right. for um Chitara she he's either lying or she's going to do it. Emily Blunt as Chitara. It's going to be hard. <laughs> That's not it's a gonna... superhero movie. Technically. Exactly, exactly. This is more of a science fiction type situation. Yeah. So I think she would be great as Chitara. Now, as as uh, uh, Lionel, I keep bigging him up. I think I've mentioned him as Hercules. Um, probably even he man, but again, he has the look for uh, a th for Lionel as a Thundercat. Um, I forget his name, Von something, Alan Von Moger. Yes, he can, he, he can physically, he doesn't have to be as huge like he can, as he has been, he can get into the right shape to play Lionel. He's a young cat. I think he's young. I think he's in his late twenties, maybe very early thirties. But I think he can play that role as Lionel, uh, um, Lord of the Thundercats, and that would be my cast for the Thundercats. I think that's a perfect cast, if especially if you do it in the manner of which they're trying to do it. Um, these guys would would I think embody those characters very well. Pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Wow. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of well, who am I um um who am I missing here? Um, what about uh what's the bad guy's name? Mumra? Mumra. You I mean I think you just got gotta not certainly not Al Pacino. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, it'd be too silly. <laughs> Put no. the cascade no. around here. <laughs> oh, you, you um, I don't know. I don't know for Mumra because you can play anybody. You because he's old and feeble, and then he turns into Mumra. That would be CGI like crazy. I, who would voice that character? I don't know. Yeah, that's probably right. Actually, because you have the like he's hooded and then he kind of is unleashed and like yeah, that's probably right. I don't know if that would actually be a person. Yeah, yeah. so it'd probably be more of a more of a voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my cast for Thundercast. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of that cast. Who else would you cast as Lionel? Because for Panthro, there's nobody else I can play. Panthro, like, <laughs> like I think this guy, he, he's perfect. I, he's perfect. Tigra, I think Pattinson has that look for Tigra. If you look at the, the, the cartoon, Pattinson, that's Pattinson right there. <laughs> Emily Blunt as, as Chitara. 
I think it, I, I think it works if, if she's willing to do it. I mean, she's not willing to do anything. It seems like she wants to do other stuff. But let's see. Um, but yeah, that's my cast. What you, what are your what are your thoughts on that? No, that'd be fun. I love it if, you, if they could get that, if they could get a cast like that together. I would certainly be interested to see what it it looked like up on screen, or if like they do motion capture or something like that, yeah. where it's sort of them. Like you know, it's sort of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm fascinated that this got greenlit, and you know, I have to think he has a pretty specific idea to already know how he wants to shoot it. So yeah, I'm curious. I to just see. like I said, Godzilla versus Kong, like um. Yeah, the story was absurd and all the human stuff was 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 out there but look i mean that the action shots were great I mean, the guy the guy made a lot of that look really believable so yeah yeah yeah. you know he sold me on the idea that he can do this idea of like uh you know at like you know action have a look yeah cool yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 let's see um that's our show for today please let everyone hit that like and subscribe button hit that notification bell share with your friends let us know in the comment section below what you thought of what we had to say today brian any last words no i'm just yeah jam-packed with news and Loki is what two weeks away so yeah we're, we're ramping up it's great yeah um i'm looking forward to seeing what outside of loki i'm looking to see what else in that because there were a lot of shots that looked very interesting and I want to see what he is in, in that timeline, what transpired, especially in New York um, and some other places that I'm not too familiar with, but they may not be familiar because of how devastated it looks or how different it looks, but it may be places that we are familiar with. It's, time will tell when we get that. I, I, that first episode, we probably might not get none of that, We'll probably get the stage, set up the stage of what he has to do and how he's going to do it, with whom he's going to do it. So uh, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on another Gen Report. Bye.